We shift our focus now to the ongoing war in Ukraine. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, this past week said he had no doubt that his country was not to blame for a missile strike on Tuesday that hit a Polish village, killing two people. That's despite NATO's initial assessment that the blast took place as Ukraine was trying to defend itself against Russia. All parties are urging restraint for now, but for a moment, the incident highlighted just how little it would take to widen the scope of the war. Meantime, the first snow fell in Kyiv, while Russia continues to target civilian infrastructure and the electrical grid. For more on what the winter will look like, we're joined by NPR's Greg Myrie from Kyiv. It's great to have you with us. Good to be here, Jeff. And Greg, what's the latest on the investigation of that missile strike that, that hit that Polish village just four miles from the Ukrainian border? Right. So Poland has invited the United States and now Ukraine to, to figure out what happened. And it, it shouldn't be a huge mystery. mystery. The, the missile left a big crater. There were fragments there uh, providing what seems to be enough information to identify whose missile it was. And there seems to be a general consensus among Poland, the U.S., and NATO that this was a Ukrainian air defense missile. Russia was firing 100 missiles into Ukraine on Tuesday. Ukraine actually shot a lot of them down. It says it shot about 75 of them down with air defense missiles. It seems that this one in question uh, missed its target. Uh, there, these missiles are supposed to then self-destruct. Apparently, this one did not and landed in Poland. The interesting thing here, Jeff, is that uh, President Zelensky is, is kind of uh, still saying or is still not acknowledged that it might be a, a Ukrainian missile. Um, nobody's blaming him. Uh, Poland, U.S., NATO all say, we understand why this happened. Um, uh, and it seems like, you know, the the thing to do here is just say, OK, it was an accident. Let's move on. But Ukraine and President Zelensky still haven't acknowledged it was their missile. What does his reluctance to acknowledge, as you put it, that it was their missile? And what does the international response suggest to you about the geopolitical landscape right now at month 10 of this of this war? Right. I mean, what's notable about this is is Ukraine and its Western backers have pretty much been on the same page throughout the war. They've had a few little quibbles here and there. It's, it's kind of unusual for them not to be in agreement here. So that's what's significant. Although, quite frankly, I think uh, among the Western countries, there's a real sense of relief that it, it is a Ukrainian missile rather than a Russian missile. If it were a Russian missile, then you'd have all sorts of issues there. It would be a strike in a NATO country. Was it intentional? Was it accidental? How do you respond? So I think in terms of the geopolitics, it's much easier to say this is an understandable accident that, that took place. Ukraine didn't mean to do this. Let's move on. Let's not uh, get involved in some big uh, confrontation, additional confrontation with Russia, in addition to all the, the issues that are uh, in front of us right now. Yeah. Uh, Russia is targeting civilian infrastructure from bridges and roads to the electrical grid. It, that strikes me as a concerted effort, an unlawful effort by the losing Russian forces to erode the Ukrainian will to fight. How do you see it? Uh, th that's a pretty good summary, Jeff. I mean, the Russian ground forces have really not been able to advance uh, for the last four months or so. And in fact, they've been pushed back in a number of instances. The Russian Navy is sort of sitting out there in the Black Sea, not firing some missiles, but not really doing much beyond that. The Russian Air Force is not sending many, if any, manned planes into Ukrainian airspace because they're getting shot down so frequently. So Russia's military efforts uh, have really come to a uh, standstill or even been in reverse in recent months. The one vulnerable spot the Russians have picked out and determined is to fire barrages of missiles at Ukrainian civilians, and in particular, the energy grid. And as you noted, it's getting cold very fast here. Temperatures have, are dipping below, uh, below freezing here in Kyiv. We're getting snow. And the, the efforts to repair the, the energy system, um, the Ukrainians have shown a real ability to do that. But it's going to be a struggle to do this for the next three or four months. They repair it. The Russians hit it. Every time we go through this cycle, the Ukrainians lose a little bit of capacity in their energy system. So it's going to be a real battle this winter to see who, uh, who can stay ahead of the other side.
Yeah, what you describe is a real dire situation in the 30 seconds we have left. I mean, what are you hearing from people there in Kyiv as you do your reporting? Well, the Ukrainians are, are not uh, uh, lessening their resolve. And I think if you remember back at the beginning of the war, you did see millions of people leave Ukraine and go to Poland and other countries. They're, they're not doing that now. They're staying here. They know it's going to be a hard winter. They're already experiencing power cuts. So they know it's going to be tough, but you see them staying. Uh, they say, we're going we're gonna to fight it out. Our intention is to stay here and, and not to leave. NPR's Greg Myrie joining us tonight from Kyiv. Thanks so much, Greg. My pleasure, Jeff.